Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our YouTube channel once again. And it is my hope and prayer that this video is actually going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I am fine as you can see. Kisumu is also fantastic. And maybe you could also let me know where you are watching the video from. The county or the country in case you are out of the republic. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to begin this video by asking you guys some two questions. The first question that I wanted to ask you guys is that if the mountain could dump Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta, a man they referred to as anointed one, is there anything that can stop the mountain from dumping William Samoyara Proto? For me, if you ask me that question, I don't think there is anything that can stop the mountain from dumping William Samoyara Proto. The second question that I wanted to ask you guys is also related to the first question. If Uhuru Muge Kenyatta and William Samoyara Pruto could fall out after the 2013 general election, is there anything that stops Rigadi Gashagwa and Ruto from falling out? Because remember, Uhuru Kenyatta and Ruto had that chemistry. They were almost age mates. They've worked, they worked together for a very long time. If they fail out, these guys could even put on similar dressing code, both colors and design. If they could fall out, is there anything that stops Ruto from regarding Ashagwa from falling out? And it takes me to something that I said on this platform some, uh, I think last week. Last week, for those who were on this platform, I suggested that there is a serious fallout in Kenya Kwanza and that it's just a matter of time before that fallout actually erupts publicly. So on uh, Friday, William Ruto was in Siaya. And while in Siaya, William Ruto made a certain statement that was actually directed at Rigadi Gashagwa. It's, it was about Rigadi Gashagwa's statement on uh, shareholding. Listen into that statement by William Ruto. Na watu wa Nyanza mimi nataka niwaeleze mtu asiwaambie ya kwamba muko nje ya serikali. Hii serikali ni serikali ya Kenya. Nyinyi mnalipa ushuru. Na nyinyi ni wa Kenya. Hii serikali ni serikali yenu. Nyinyi mnanielewa? Na tutahakikisha ya kwamba hakuna sehemu ya Kenya itabaguliwa kwa mambo ya maendeleo kwa misingi ya siasa. Tunataka kuhakikisha kwamba Kenya ni moja na tutaungana sisi wote kama viongozi ndio Kenya iweze kusonga mbele it is primitive and backwards for anybody to imagine that any region of Kenya cannot get development on account of how they voted that is not right that is not correct and i want to assure the people of Kenya that we are going to move together as one nation no that's william ruto appearing to be castigating his deputy rigadi kashagwa Rigadi Gashagwa then yesterday responded to William Ruto. And that's going to be the basis of this analysis. According to Rigadi Gashagwa, <laughs> he's working hard to increase Mount Kenya shareholding from 47% to 60%. Remember previously he was just talking of shares. Yesterday he was very specific on 47%. Basically, he was reminding Ruto that the mountain actually gave him 47% of the votes he got. For me, that's a very serious statement. Listen in to Rigadi Gashago making that statement because I want us in this video, I want us to look at why Rigadi Gashago responded to William Ruto like that. I want this region to deliver a decisive vote for President William Ruto in 2027 and to make sure that we increase our shareholding in his government from 47 percent to almost 60 percent many people are uncomfortable about our shareholding nikidogo is only 47 27 to the i don't know why many people have a problem when this region is united in purpose Many people, for whatever reason, are very uncomfortable. But I'm sorry there is nothing they can do. 
I'm sorry for their discomfort. Now that's Rigathi Gashagwa. Why do you think Rigathi Gashagwa made that statement? That's exactly what I want us to look in this video. But before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. And without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to dive in. And by the way, yesterday, Maina Njenga, chairman Mwenyewe, caused a huge political storm in the Republic of Kenya after hosting, is it men's conference, serious men's conference at Kenol. That rally by Maina Njenga is actually sending shockwaves in Mount Kenya. So hopefully if we get time, that's going to be our next video. But let us focus on Rigadi Gashagwa's response to William Ruto. For those who've been following uh, Rigadi Gashagwa's strategy for a very long time, Rigadi Gashagwa has always tried to follow the footsteps of Moi, the footsteps of William Ruto, where he's a deputy president, but proving his loyalty. For me, I never imagined that Rigadi Gashagwa would actually go public and answer William Ruto the way he did yesterday. And because in politics nothing happens out of mere coincidence, there must have been a political objective or some political objectives that Rigadi Gashagwa really wanted to achieve by responding to William Samuel Arap Ruto. For me, if you ask me, the first objective that he wanted to do, in my view, is basically to try and rally the mountain behind him. Rigadi Gashagwa currently is isolated in the mountain. He's also isolated in Kenya Kwanza. Nationally, Rigadi Gashagwa is not being viewed as the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. Majority of Kenyans view Rigadi Gashagwa as the deputy president of the mountain because that's what he has tried to do. So by reminding Ruto about the shareholding 47%, Basically, he's trying to rally the mountain behind him. I don't know whether he's going to succeed because we are already seeing the emergence of uh, Maina Njenga there. And of course, I'm sure William Ruto is also plotting something against Rigadi Gashagwa. I've seen people saying that William Ruto is on a mission trying to use Rigadi Gashagwa to consolidate the mountain. You see, William Ruto doesn't really need Rigadi Gashagwa to consolidate the mountain. He only needs to create anti rail Odinga narrative in the mountain. Basically, by not going to Nyanza, it's enough <laughs> to rally the mountain against Raila. Period. So, in my view, Rigadi is trying to use that. He wants to appear as the defender of the mountain. Because the mountain really voted for Ruto. Without the mountain, in my view, there is no way William Ruto would have been the president of the Republic of Kenya. If you look at the votes of 2022, you'll agree that the mountain actually gave Ruto the votes. Number two, Rigadi Gashagwa is also trying to remind Ruto of politics of betrayal. But I want to educate Rigadi Gashagwa about something that I've consistently said on this platform. That in politics, you have only two constants. The first constant in politics is interest. As long as the interests of Ruto and Rigadi are converging, they will work together. Then the other one is betrayal. Any politician will work with any other politician. Right now, I don't think that the interest of Rigadi Gashagwa and those are, of Ruto are converging. So Rigadi Gashagwa must be prepared for betrayal. And that is what is reminding Ruto that, that uh, Uhuru betrayed Ruto. And Ruto ended up losing. And that's why he's flashing the, 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 the numbers card. 
basically the game of numbers when rigadi gashagwa talks of 47% it means ruto delivered how many percent from rift valley mudavadi so it means simply means that out of the 100% if the mountain delivered 47% it simply means that the rest delivered 53%. So you split those 53% with those. And again, if you look at the numbers in the mountain, the 10 Mount Kenya counties actually gave Ruto close to 3 million votes. While at the same time, they gave Raila Odinga 850,000 votes. Of course, now that one, you exclude the diaspora, like you go to Nakuru, you know, those other places. If you add those figures, for example, you realize that Mount Kenya might have given Ruto over 4 million votes. Those are the reality. Those are the realities. And of course, for Raila Odinga, it's projected that he got close to 1.4 million votes from the mountain. So it's just reminding Ruto about the politics of Versailles. Number three, three in my view, I think Rigeti Ashagwa is a keen student of Ruto. He's following William Ruto's 2022 playbook. How did William Ruto manage to win the heart of the mountain? How did he manage to win the heart of Rift Valley? In Rift Valley, those were his people. So they had to follow him. But for Mount Kenya, William Ruto had to play sympathy card. That is, that's exactly what, in my view, Rigedi Gashagwa is trying to do. Playing sympathy card on his community. But we voted for this guy 47% of the votes. But right now, he's, he's sidelining me. And not only me, he's also sidelining us in terms of appointments, working with the people who never really voted for him. By telling Ruto about 47%, he's telling Ruto that that's Rail Odinga. Because at the same time, he also told Raila, he also told Ruto that in case he works with Raila, a revolt he should expect. <laughs> So for me, he's trying to seek sympathy from his Kikuyu community. Number four, this is also a direct, indirect message or a coded message to Ruto over the appointments. You, you know, there's someone who really analyzed the latest ambas ambassador's appointment. And uh, he concluded that those appointments Actually, the mountain really suffered because majority of people who were appointed by Uhuru Kenyatta were recalled. And many of them were never refilled with the Kikuyu community. So it's telling Ruto that you can work with Raila, you can work with Mulavadi, but for the mountain, spare them that 47% in terms of appointment or any other thing. And lastly, I think Rigeti Gashagwa is also reacting because of Musalia Mulavadi factor. If there's one ghost that is really giving Rigeti Gashagwa sleepless nights, then that ghost is the ghost of Musalim Davadi. He's not sleeping. I don't know what you think. That's my take. Thank you guys. Until next time, this is Lee McQueen. Bye-bye.